Good morning, Sam Tinpenny with Tri-State Livestock News, the Fence Post and Farmer and Rancher Exchange with your Tuesday morning headlines concerning fair cattle markets. Reuters reported that Russia will be resuming beef and pork imports from 12 subsidiaries of Brazilian producers, lifting restrictions that have been in place since 2017 after alleged use of the feed additive Rostopamine. Moscow allowed beef imports from another three units of major Brazilian beef exporters last week as it moved to boost domestic supply, and further supplies will resume from nine units producing pork and three units producing beef. Brazil's biggest beef processors, JBS, Minerva, and Marfa Global Foods, did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Russia plans to set a duty-free import quota for up to 200,000 tons of beef in 2022 in order to boost domestic supply as part of measures the government's hope will help stabilize domestic inflation, which is at a five-year high. For Brazil, the world's largest beef exporter, Russia is a promising market as its exports to China were temporarily suspended back in September after two atypical cases of mad cow disease were reported in the South American nation. Since the cases in cattle were announced, Brazil has also reported two cases of the neurodegenerative disorder in people, though agriculture officials say they were not related to beef consumption. The Calgary Herald reported that Cargill issued a lockout notice to workers at one of Canada's largest meatpacking plants on Thursday, a day after 98% of unionized workers at the High River facility voted against the company's latest contract offer, putting them in a position to strike as early as December 6th. In a response posted online, Local 401 President Thomas Hesse said that employees are not deterred by Cargill's lockout notice and that the near-unanimous rejection of the contract offer shows the need for the employer to rebuild trust in wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. The labor dispute heated up two weeks ago when union leaders issued Cargill a notice that workers would hit the picket line if a new collective agreement could not be reached. The strike would come as prices of red meat approach record highs in North America amid global supply chain struggles and a shutdown of the High River facility, a plant that accounts for about 40% of Canada's beef processing capacity, would inject even more uncertainty into that market. In an emailed statement, Cargill spokesman Daniel Sullivan said the company is willing to keep meeting to avoid any labor disruptions, which are in no one's best interest during an already challenging time. According to the Hagstrom report, despite the higher cost at the grocery store, the National Farmers Union has confirmed that farmers will only receive 14.3 cents of every dollar spent on this year's Thanksgiving meal. NFU President Rob LaRue said that even though consumers are paying more for their food this year, that almost none of that is being passed on to America's family farmers and ranchers. Multiple waves of mergers and acquisitions during the last several decades have resulted in agriculture and food supply chains that are uncompetitive, fragile, and underpay farmers as the farmer's share of every dollar consumers spend on food has fallen from 50% in 1952 to less than 15% today. Until next time, I'm Sam Tenpenny, and this is your Fair Cattle Market Update.